my talk, the title of my talk is here. It's uh, different than the previous ones. Unfortunately, I, am, I will not have a lot of models, in fact, any model, just simulations. But on the other hand, maybe you, you can find it interesting and maybe also you can offer us some model of yours which can work for our problem. And maybe this is also the reason why to meet here the different different, different uh, uh, scientists from different fields. Yeah. Uh, the work, work was done at the Institute of Physical Engineering, uh, uh, Brno University of Technology and Central European Institute of Technology also seated there. And uh, just let me uh, tell a few words about outline. There will be a short introduction, graphene preparation and characterization, just to explain how uh, the graphene is uh, prepared, then transport properties, then real-time gallium doping and monitoring, and measurement of transport properties, and finally DFT and GA doping, the, the attempt to explain those uh, processes, and uh, finally conclusion. Okay. Just let me introduce our institute and uh, research center in Brno. So our uh, Institute of Physical Engineering uh, is responsible for education of students in the field of physical engineering, let's say applied physics and nanotechnology. And we have been uh, interested from the very beginning uh, in uh, multi-layers, ultra-thin films, uh, surfaces, uh, later on nanostructures, nanotechnology, and there is some tradition also uh, in uh, development of equipment for scientific equi equipment. You can see some of them here. And finally, also in 2015, uh, there have, uh, something like that, have been uh, uh, founded a so-called Central European Institute of Technology, CETEC, this is, in fact, an umbrella uh, virtual center, research center, uh, embracing uh, different, different uh, universities in, in Brno and also research institutes. And there are seven programs, five of them are related to life sciences and two of them to materials. And our university is responsible for coordination of those programs. So, then finally, graphene, as you know, it's a single, atom, uh, single atomic layer sufficiently of graphite, sufficiently isolated. Uh, it has been given, the discovery of that uh, was awarded by the Nobel Prize. There are a lot of interesting properties around and also promising applications, but to be honest, still the reality is lagging behind the expectations. And uh, one of the reasons is that still until now, the best properties of graphene can be obtained for uh, the exfoliate, for exfoliated graphene, exfoliated out of the graphite. And the problem is that in this way, you can use a scotch, scotch, scotch tape and you can uh, simply peel off one, if you are lucky, one monolayer of the uh, graphene or graphite and it's graphene. And the problem is that the, 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 the objects or the single uh, grains or, yeah, grains are very small, still in units of micrometers, and it's difficult for applications. Yeah, even, uh, even to attach electrodes, it's not so easy and to measure, for instance, for instance some, uh, some uh, electronic or electric properties. So that's why uh, people try to uh, fabricate that graphene by other methods. Unfortunately, unfortunately, still the properties of those artificially prepared layers of graphene are not so good like that one. So, and one of the most, uh, the, the major method is, most spread uh, and popular method is CVD, chemical vapor deposition, uh, where you have a reactor and you put inside some gas, or for instance methane, and then under, uh, at high temperature, you will decompose it using some uh, metal catalyst, uh, for instance, copper. And this is the method exactly we do in our lab. Then after growing that graphene, you should somehow uh, peel it off or to get it out of that uh, 
metallic catalyst, the copper, so you do it some by some chemical way, which brings some problems, but I will not go into detail. So in our lab, we, yeah, of course, we use also exfoliated graphene, but for applications I will talk about, we use definitely the CVD graphene, and uh, we can uh, grow, uh, grow it in some reactors, and you can choose either high pressure growth method, or you can go for lower pressures using some folded copper foil, and having, having the, that catalyst play, uh, plate, metal plate inside. And you can grow grains, because we try to have as big grains as possible to avoid or to minimize the borders of, of those grains, because those borders are, de are deter de detriment for, let's say, max for some electric properties like mobility and so on. And we usually, we are really happy if we have the mobility like, for instance, 3,000 centimeters square per volt per second, which is far behind the expectations. Uh, very often we are, we go just to hundreds. And, and this is the problem if you, for instance, want to use graphene for some photonics or nanophotonics applications. So, but for some, let's say, um, the fields of interest, we, I will be talking about it's, it's good. Okay, so what is necessary is also to, you should check the quality because if your graphene is not uh, pure enough or it has some defects, that definitely mobility goes, goes rapidly down. And you can use, for instance, micro Raman where you can measure, even on individual grains, you can measure the, the quality of that layer, and if there is some defect, an additional peak appears there. Also, we use the surface science, surface-related method, very sensitive to just one monolayer, and we use scattering of ions, usually helium ions, in the, few, let's say, energy range of hundreds to ones, to thousands of electron volts. And by that method, for instance, we have found some impurities, heavy metal impurities, below uh, the graphene. So, okay. Then, just about graphene, just to remind it to us, uh, this is the graphene lattice, the unit mesh is here, having or possessing two atoms. This is the reciprocal lattice, first brillon zone, and what is known for graphene and unique, that it has at the borders of, of, the, of, the, of the brillon zone, there are so-called uh, Dirac uh, coins, and uh, uh, cones, sorry, Dirac cones, and uh, what is uh, interesting that there is no ga gap, and uh, it may, this fact makes some people from s s semiconductor industry sad because you cannot simply switch off the current. On the other hand, it, it makes it easier to, and I will talk about that, to dope the graphene and, for instance, to use it for sensing. Okay, just about uh, <coughs> graphene, doping, and related transport properties. So let's start, for instance, here. For, you, you can have enough electrons, so you fill in this, this, this uh, cone below the, the, the Dirac cone. Dirac cone is this one. And, or it's also called charge neutrality mm, point. And if, uh, and if the Fermi level goes just through that, like here, then the conductivity is the minimal or theoretically zero, or resistivity is maximum. And simply due to the fact that your, the density of states is zero or very small there. And then, uh, let's say, if you look here to the right uh, side, uh, then you have don't you don't have enough electrons. Electrons are here, so Fermi level is here, and in that uh, case, uh, graphene behaves like the p conductor, p semi or p semiconductor. Sorry. On the other hand, if you have more electrons than in in this central case, then it behaves like an n semiconductor, and uh, then usually you can 
how to, how to do it in how to do it how to change the number of electrons for instance by electric doping i will show it to you simply you put some some electrode nearby with graphene and by the electric field you can attract or repulse electrons and in this way to change them so if you for instance have such a uh, let's so many electrons there, so you have a p-doped semiconductor, so by increasing the gate voltage, voltage on, the, uh, the, on an electrode nearby, you are going closer, closer, and your resistivity is going up. Then, so you are on this side and you have P type of semiconductor. If you keep going to positive values, then you get more and more electrons uh, and you are here, a density of stacy increasing and the resistivity goes down. So in this way, you can recognize where are you and how your graphene behaves and how many uh, electrons or is there. So what is the concentration of of, or electrons or holes, eh? what is the concentration of charge carriers. And this is just an example how to realize it, that simply you, for instance, this is a, some field effect, transistor in fact, there is the graphene, there is a dielect, uh, some di dielectrics like silicon dioxide, and here is the silicon. And in, f and in this configuration, you can easily find number of electrons in graphene uh, simply by, by using the uh, primitive uh, formula for a capacitor. And you see that the concentration of electrons inside graphene is proportional to that gate voltage. Uh, of course, you can put here, when you put here electrodes, here and here, and a voltage to that, you can have current through that, but by gate voltage, you can change the conductivity of, of, that, of that graphene. Uh, you can make it in a more sophisticated way, for instance, that you start to pattern that graphene in such a way, we call it whole bar, and then you can use for measurement four contact, uh, four point method, and you can measure, I don't know, better mobility or uh, density of, uh, of, uh, of electrons and so on. Uh, that's it. And now, concerning fabrication, uh, yeah, that's not, I think, the conference for explaining that, but simply we use electron beam lithography and we should first, we have graphene, then we deposit a pattern uh, or deposit in specific form the electrode, and then we should make also to remove in specific parts graphene simply by etching it in the plasma, oxygen plasma. This is one way how to, how to dope it, but you can dope it also or not electrically, but in another way, simply that you uh, put on the surface some atoms, molecules, or medium, because those atoms, molecules are usually sources of electrons or they can take electrons from graphene. So, uh, for instance, you can deposit atoms, gallium atoms, I'll talk about that so, uh, later on. On, or you can put whatever you want in principle, and for instance, even some biomolecules, and you can use it for biosensors. Okay, we also use that uh, graphene system for uh, uh, detect as a sensor of uh, humi of water. So you can see here that by changing the relative humidity, those steps, yeah, you the, are are resistance is somehow following that, uh, that uh, humidity. But this is good, but on the other hand, water makes a lot of problem. Because if you look here, there is just we put on the gate voltage a, si a sing simple uh, step, voltage step, and you would suppose that resistivity goes up and then it is kept uh, constant. But it's not true. If there is some, uh, some water around, then it starts to go down. This is most likely due to the fact that water takes electrons out of graphene. And higher, higher uh, humidity, faster decrease 
of that, let's say, uh, resistivity the response. Fortunate, so it makes problem. For instance, those sensors for whatever, if it is under atmospheric conditions that once and there is always, always water, that there are, you, you face very often those, that behavior which is reflected into hysteresis. Okay. Fortunately, if you put your sample into UHV, where there is mini, the water content is minimized, then it disappears. So once you, you can put, put step-like uh, step -like, uh, voltage there, and uh, resistivity change follows it nicely. And that's why in, in the next slides, I will talk about the experiment which was done fully under UHV conditions to get rid of that, that uh, water influence. So, that's the time. How many? Yeah. Half an hour. Uh, sorry? Okay. Half an hour. So, uh, I'll talk about real time. Thank you. Real time graphene doping and uh, transport measurements upon gallium adsorption in UHV, as I have mentioned. So, we put, we made some field effect transistor, similar shape I have shown you, uh, with graphene, put it inside, and then we, s we made so-called back gate voltage tracing. Simply we were, s we were sweeping the gate voltage. And what we have found, this is that red, uh, that black curve, that we found that the Dirac, that maximum resistivity, it means the Dirac point, is practically out of the scale. What does it mean? It means that we have had, or we had the graphene doped by some impurity, some molecules from around. To get rid of that and to get it closer to that zero, which is ideal, uh, to zero bad gate voltage, we annealed the, the sample. It was took 34 hours, 120 degrees of Celsius, and then once again made, made that bad gate tracing. And you have, we got the curve here. So it's after annealing. And then we, yeah, and I, here I must say, for instance, that here, we were on the left-hand side. It means our graphene behaved like P semiconductor because somewhere here, you see, it's growing with the growing voltage, it's growing resistivity. But here is something between, and then we start. Sorry, we started to deposit gallium and and kept depositing it and were sweeping the voltage. And you see that in a course of time, those curves were shifting to the left. And when the Dirac point started to, to leave that range, we were somewhere above the coverage of 10 to the minus one monolayers. So what does it mean? It means that, in fact, we were pumping electron inside because simply we were on this uh, here somewhere, and we were increasing number of electrons that were going to the right. Okay, and here you, you, you can see that when we calculate from the position, from the voltage of that Dirac point, saying uh, by that formula I have shown you, the for capacitor, the concentration of electrons, it look, looks like that. With the growing, here is the concentration of gallium on the, on the surface. It means number of atoms we brought. And this is the concentration of electrons calculated in graphene calculated from that maxima. And you see that it started to immediately from the beginning to deviate from the ideal dependence, which is the red curve, where we, where which tells us the, that one atom gives us one electron because gallium is like S uh, kind of, of uh, uh, has S electrons, yeah, yeah? uncompensated. So it gives, it donates one electron. So, because you see two, and here is two, three, three. So one atom gives one, 
one electron, three atoms, three electrons. So it starts to be to less if somehow gallium doesn't give so much electrons there. And we kept going uh, that, that position and, and uh, it was moving to the left, but suddenly from, uh, let me show, from 0.2 monolayers, the coverage, that curve stopped and started to go to the right. It means somehow happened that even though we had there more gallium atoms, we were taking electrons back from the graphene. Okay, so to explain it, and here it is that we, uh, we went for some uh, DFT simulations. Uh, we use WASP. This is just for the introduction that this is uh, energy uh, electronic structure of uh, graphene, pristine graphene. You see that if you have just pristine graphene, then that uh, at zero temperature, that Fermi level goes through the direct. Uh, the, the, so Dirac point, so charge neutrality point. And then when, if you somehow doped that graphene, then uh, that uh, Fermi level, of course, is shifting either up or down. It depends, yeah? Okay, what, and now what about this? gallium adsorption. So we had to calculate it, uh, to simulate it. So this is our uh, graphene supercell we used and where we started to put the, those atoms. In fact, uh, graphene atoms were, uh, we had 228 atoms. Height of the supercell, this one was about 17 angstroms. So to, uh, to limit interaction with other layers of graphene, yes. Uh, of course, and then we tested, uh, in fact, at the beginning, the position. So we put, for instance, atom here or here on the top or the bridge and let the system relax. And we found that the most, most stable position is for the atom in the position C. And that energy was like that. Okay, then here you have comparison of density of states. So it's for total, it means for all atoms, graphene and, and gallium. It's for specific case, yeah, for specific concentration, just a demonstration, graphene is here. Uh, okay. Then, must say, uh, how, to, uh, how to find the number of uh, those, uh, that doping, so here it's a Fermi level. And in fact, at first approximation, you can say that the doping is given by the difference between Fermi level and that zero uh, charge or that charge neutrality point, the Dirac point. Okay, but if you want to make it more so in a more sophisticated way, then you can go to look for the, the, the charge density distribution. So you should calculate that uh, electron density. There is some method. Uh, in fact, it was done by my, uh, my PhD students, so don't ask me <laughs> in some details about that. But this is a standard method, you, how you can say how the, uh, the charge was transferred from one atom to another one, graph, uh, uh, sorry, gallium to graphene. And then here there is a result that depending on the concentration of uh, gallium atoms, here you have a shift of Fermi energy. You see that it's growing, growing good, so uh, graphene is taking electron, but less and less, not so intensively, and here we have kind of saturation. And this happened at the concentration like that, which corresponds roughly to 0.5 monolayers. But in our experiment, I mentioned it, the turning point where the graphene started to lose electron was somewhere already at 0.2, somewhere here. But those calculations, they don't reflect it. So you, this is also demonstrated here. Here is concentration of electrons. Sorry for those negative values. It's just to stress that those are electrons. Otherwise, the, the magnitude is, is important. Here is the concentration of gallium atoms. Uh, you see that it goes, uh, that concentration of electrons is growing, 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 but here stops growing, and it was at 0.5 uh, 
uh, 0.5 uh, monolayers. And I must say, sorry for that, but that this is simulation for layer by layer growth. So sim simply, the atoms were in in one plane, and only after after higher uh, coverages, then it started to go down. It means some from there on, the electrons started to be removed from graphene. And uh, how to explain it? Simply, we found that 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 the distance with the growing number of uh, graphene, the distance between gra uh, sorry of growing number of of uh, gallium, the distance between gallium layer and the surface was growing. So most li likely due to that, the, uh, the effectiveness of the transfer of electrons were, were getting smaller. But, but in fact, it doesn't, uh, despite of that, uh, that, that we see here some decrease, reality was different and we had it at 0.2 two monolayers, not 0.5 monolayers. So we started to think about that and why it is earlier. So, and one of the questions or the possibilities was, let's have a look at clusters. Because we supposed here that model was for atoms in the layer. But if we have, what about clusters? Because it is known that if you deposit more than one monolayer, we can see that the uh, gallium atom starts to make droplets. It means it's not the layer by layer, layer growth. So what about that? So and we uh, started to play with that in the, our simulations that we put, for instance, two atoms to each other and look for a relic, how they relax or three atoms and, and simply we, uh, it means, and we got uh, clusters of two, three atoms clusters. And when we look for concentration, it's here, rows and points, and here is the, here is the, the uh, magnification of the blow up. So you see that really it started to deviate for, for that quick decrease. It seems that indicates that the turning point can happen earlier. So, and to make it in more, let's say, more carefully, so that's why we also decided to employ Van der Waals forces there, because definitely they should play the role there. This is a model which is uh, standard for in that WASP. And uh, here you can see cutoff function, which where you terminate the interaction at a certain distance. And this is the result. On the left-hand side, you have our, the results of our calculations for, for the situation where we have no Van der Waals forces employs, we have Van der Waals forces uh, inside. And, uh, if we, and we, we, when we, if we had, well, in case of two atoms, we put atoms to the centers of those, those uh, uh, hexagons and uh, let it relax. And this was the result, that we had atoms here and they were in one plane. But if we uh, put there three atoms uh, after rela and after relaxation, you see that it starts really to make kind of islands or clusters before that. Yeah? But this is not the case of if you have Van der Waals uh, interaction there, it still remains in the one plane. And then we continue, there are four atoms, there are two atoms above that in the equilibrium state, and here still it is in one plane. And our, only after five atoms, or we put there, even for the Van der Waals forces, it seems to make clusters. So, and this is the, the, there are the results, so let's start with the distance between cluster and graphene be, as a function of number of atoms. And we can see that with a growing number of atoms, uh, distance between cluster and graphene really goes up. It means that there is a s less and less uh, interaction with the, with the, with the uh, graphene. And you you, it's reflected in binding energy because binding energy goes down. Of course, that in case of Van der Waals forces, the distance is lower because uh, there are Van der Waals forces are still attractive, and binding energy is higher. And then it must be reflected in in charge transfer and Fermi level shift. 
where you have, uh, you have uh, charge transfer is becoming less effective if you go down, and uh, of course, if Fermi level shift is less. And def definitely for Van der Waal forces, it's, it's stronger, the charge transfer, because those atoms are closer to the surface, you can see it here. Also, what is interesting, it's not some error in calculations, but for uh, odd numbers of atoms, the, the distance between clusters and the uh, surface are, uh, is smaller. So also, charge transfer should be, should be bigger yeah? here. Maybe because simply if you have that uh, odd uh, atom, then it's not, it doesn't react it doesn't have a free neighbor to react, and then it may somehow react more with the surface. So, uh, in principle, we can say that those clusters decrease the transfer of electrons to the surface, because simply those atoms react to, uh, among each other, I mean gallium atoms, and not so much with the graphene. It would be nice here, to show you now the uh, atomically resolved uh, images of surface of graphene with gallium atoms, but unfortunately, I must, I must uh, say that uh, we don't have it. Uh, I'm still pushing for those experimental results to prove such a behavior, but somehow, uh, in our group, there is still not enough time to do it, even though we have an e equipment to do it, but yeah. But maybe you can find it interesting, and maybe you can come with some interesting model, how to explain it, also to describe that nucleation and, uh, uh, and the way of the growth on the surface of gallium, on the surface of graphene, and then we'll be more motivated to go and to confer it by that AFM. Well, I'm almost done. Just we have also of course, calculated the energy map that simply we were calculated energy map inside for different positions of gallium atoms inside of graphene hexagon. And this is like that. So if you go from the point, central point through this uh, bridge point and to the central point, so there is such a, a barrier which is about 1.1 oh, point, uh, one point, oh, one electron volts. Uh, yeah, okay. So which might be useful uh, information for some simulations, calculations. So that's all. Uh, I, a summary or conclusions. Uh, I have shown you that gallium, gallium, gallium atoms dope graphene by electrons. Then uh, we have gallium-gallium bonding decreases the effect of doping. Then there is relatively small diffusion barrier and atomically resolved state measurements are needed to confirm cluster formation. So that's, that's all from my side. Maybe just I would like, yeah, the acknowledgement. Uh, these are the guys responsible for experiments and preparation, but this David Nesval was the, 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 the PhD student behind those calculations. And maybe I also would like to in, yeah, introduce the whole R group, but especially to show you this photo. And here still there, is, there was uh, Peter Varga, who was a member of our group, and, but uh, this is just one year after he, he, he passed away. Just. I think it was this was this this week. Yeah? So, so and we thank him for a lot. So, thank you very much. Distortion of? The the underlying distortion. Uh, definitely, definitely, because if we, for instance, calculate the binding energy, then we, we 
should take into account a distortion change of the graphene itself. Yeah? There is, don't know how quantitatively, but, but there, there is such a distortion. But that, gra that uh, gallium is much bigger. Yeah? So, so I have a question about the cluster, uh, clustering mechanism. So uh, you said that each gallium atom donates one electron to the graphene layer, yeah, yeah. so it becomes positively charged. Pardon me? So it becomes positively charged. The gallium. Gallium yeah. is positively charged. Now, if yeah. you have two gallium ions which are positively charged, then they would uh, repel each other strongly by Coulombic forces that presumably should overwhelm that's why, that's why the Waals, uh, forces. No? That's why maybe the transfer of electrons is not so easy. It doesn't go so easy to the surface because they simply don't want it. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Might be. So, so you didn't look closer into the the mechanisms of clustering. So what, what, how the charge distributed between the gallium, the gallium atoms, rather? There, there is, the, yeah, not from that point of view, yeah, but definitely the charge distribution is <coughs> here, yeah? So you By can- By the way, in this picture, what exactly are you solving? Pardon me? Is, what, what is this picture? What are you showing us? You're solving some electrostatic problem there, right? Yeah, but what, it's demonstration. What? It's it's demonstration. Yeah? It's not from. Uh, so you are assuming that the graphene is, uh, is an equipotential surface, or is it? Yeah, a yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. There is such a condition. Yeah, such a condition. Mm -hmm. This is a standard. Yeah, some the, the, this method. Yeah, they they use for uh, for the calculation of charge transfer. What is the sun? Substrate, well, you, the Aha, the below, in the, those calculations, there is, there, there is just graphene. There is just graphene. This is that model. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I'll, I'll ask you uh, later. Yeah, OK. Thermal evaporation from an evaporator at room temperature. At room temp uh, uh, you mean sub? Yeah, on, on the on the on the substrate. Yeah, yeah. And this is the standard evaporation from PB and cell, about 1,000 degrees of Celsius. The, the cell so the, cell, the, the source was a, a cell electrons, cell. Yeah. but it's in a, in a molybdenum in a crucible. Yeah. But it's just uh, in, yeah. so in lay. That's a kind of MB UHV uh, atomic evaporation. So let's. Yeah. 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 Other questions, Thank you.